Hello, I'm Dr. Apelle Sequence, an allergy specialist in the UK and the director of the Burwood Clinic in Surrey and the Airedale Allergy Centre in Yorkshire. Uh, this is a series of uh, talks aiming to um, increase the awareness of allergy and its mechanisms amongst professionals as well as the public. I'm using methods focused on finding and dealing with the underlying causal factors which affect the immune system and human health. I believe that the human body runs into problems mainly because of continuous exposures to common agents we do not routinely suspect, such as foods, allergens in the air we breathe, chemical or metal pollutants, and of course infections. You should say that without all this stuff there wouldn't be any health really. In this sec session I will focus on explaining the basic mechanisms of allergy, in particular allergies to common airborne agents, we call them inhalant allergens. But firstly, what is allergy? What are the main clues for inhalant allergy in one's history? Uh, in uh, another session I'm dealing with how allergy can be properly investigated and what are the most effective measures to deal with it. In uh, Britain there is a great deal of ambiguity as to the nature of allergy, possibly lack of basic information amongst the medical professionals who believe there is nothing else besides antihistamines, inhalers or steroids to control or suppress these symptoms. This flawed logic uh, lies behind position that if there is something better and more effective it would have been made known to doctors and be made available to patients. People in uh, some Western countries have access to effective methods of immunotherapy, or another word for it, desensitization, be it a long course of injections which aim to achieve a long-term remission or a cure after three to five years of continuous use, or its more recent development, the sublingual method of immunotherapy. In Britain, most people don't seem to have access to these options. To start with, what is allergy? The word allergy is derived from a Greek word coined by an Austrian doctor about a hundred years ago, meaning a changed response. For example, I may have been able to tolerate several courses of penicillin before I develop an allergic rash from the latest course I took. To me, allergy is a defense mechanism of the immune system. It is a chain reaction initiated by some special cells, we call them T lymphocytes or T helper cells. These cells, along with a number of other cells, play the role of the guardians of our body and our physiology in relation to external factors. These factors can range from a food, such as peanuts or seafood, to things in the air, such as pollens, dust mites, animal dander or wasp venom. These helper cells are also known to stimulate similar cells to produce immunoglobulin E antibodies specific to every single allergen the immune system is trying to warn us about. This is a highly evolved system, a very sophisticated system, an early warning system which is only activated when all other means of dealing with the problem have been exhausted. The end stage of this chain reaction involves some larger cells, we call them mast cells, which are in this way stimulated to produce histamine and other protein dissolving enzymes to send out an alarm signal, in other words. This is why antihistamines or steroids are sometimes used to suppress the symptoms of acute allergy. But, as you may have guessed, of course they're doing nothing to prevent the mechanism of such reactions. What about the most common triggers? The most common natural airborne allergens in Britain and the Western world are tree and grass pollens, house dust mites and dust, animal dander, hair, saliva and skin cells, and of course moles. Common tree pollens are birch pollen, alder, 
hazel, willow, London plain, poplar, which affect people mainly in the spring. Common grass pollens include Timothy grass, rye grass, wheat grass, Kentucky grass, coxfoot, which are prevalent mainly in the summer. Weeds, for example, nettle or ragweed, you might have heard of. Animal dander, such as cat, dog or horse hair, and of course a variety of moles. I'm sure you may have heard of penicillium, the common source of penicillin, uh, the black mold called Stachybotrys, and many others, all having Latin names. Britain seems to have a disproportionate rate of such allergies compared to other European countries in America. Why is that? There is some evidence suggests that uh, the answer lies in the climate. Britain is in many respects a wonderful country with a mild climate that is no extreme weathers, not too cold, not too hot. This happens because it is surrounded by water, the Atlantic Ocean, to the west, the Channel and the North Sea, which is acting as a weather buffer, is protecting us from uh, major extremes of weather. However, southerly and northerly weather fronts deliver a great deal of rain in Britain during dry spells. The water evaporates and the humidity that follows often rises to 80, 90, 100%, as can be seen in a simple hygrometer. <clears throat> humidity is visible in a foggy or misty day or night, but is often invisible. It is higher indoors because of central heating and double glazed windows, which have been extensively used uh, for the last few decades. High humidity is the simple and most important factor in inhalant allergies because its inevitable effect is to make the atmosphere dense, thick. If the air we breathe is dense, it's keeping allergenic particles constantly airborne. We breathe them in. They are in constant contact with our nose, eyes or airways and skin. Our immune system has to deal with them daily and sometimes it gets overwhelmed. Many people with uh, symptoms of allergic rhinitis, allergic conjunctivitis, asthma and atopic eczema have been told that they have a chronic condition which has no cure. In the absence of any preventative measures, they are stuck with the usual nasal sprays, antihistamines and bronchodilators or steroid inhalers and often see a slowly progressive loss of their breathing capacity. Years later, some of them end up with the so-called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. COPD, or the old word for that was emphysema, when medications are no longer effective and oxygen seem to be the only palliative measure left. For this reason, their life expectancy is, of course, shortened. The general view is that they suffer with a chronic irreversible condition which medically can only be controlled with medications. Uh, this, in my view, is a classic myth. I would like to dispel this myth. Some people who have a pure inhalant allergy, that means their symptoms are caused only because of inhalant allergens, often make a surprising observation that proves this notion totally inaccurate. When they take the plane and go away on holiday to a southern country such as Spain, Greece or the Caribbean with low rainfall, hence low humidity, within 24-48 hours they experience a rather miraculous clearance of their symptoms. Wheezes resolve, congestion clears, even their skin gets better, albeit in a slow motion. Their allergy is actually fully reversible because the low humidity discourages airborne allergens to stay in their breathable space. On their return to the UK, you guessed it, all their symptoms return with a vengeance after this wonderful bonanza they experienced. No, it's not the sea, or the sun, or the lack of stress, as some people believe, or sort of uh, not uh, uh, hearing the uh, world news every day. It's simply the dry climate which ensures that the air is free of allergens.